Can you tell me which one of these skeletons is biologically male or female? I'll give you a second to guess. For forensic anthropologists and crime scene investigators, being able to tell if the remains are biologically male or female cuts the identification pool in half. But how can you tell these differences in skeletal remains? Let's take a look. These two skeletons here are perfect to show you the differences because if you look at their height and stature, they're virtually identical. In general, male skeletons are going to be more robust as they have more pronounced and developed muscles attachments. Whereas female skeletons will typically present more gracile. There are different methods of biological estimation such as Dr. Joseph Hefner's method or Dr. Robert Mann's. Typically the features of the skull are going to be rated on a scale of 1 to 5 from more robust to more gracile. For example if we look at the skull here the chin is less pointy and more square which is a predominantly male feature. However here we can see that the chin is pointier which is a female dominant trait. The occipital protuberance is more developed on the male skull than it is on the female one. However, the most sexually dimorphic feature in skeletons is the pelvis. Overall, the female skeleton has more of a basin shape, whereas the male skeleton has more of a funnel shape. The pelvic inlet in females is going to be larger and more round, whereas in males it is smaller and typically heart-shaped. This is to allow for childbirth as the baby can easily pass through a larger birth canal. Morphologically, biological male skeletons are not designed to allow for childbirth. To help you better visualize, you can see that I can barely fit my fist in here and I can't really move it around. But in the female skeleton, I have plenty of room. Just like the pelvic outlet, the pelvic inlet is also going to be much smaller in males. Just look at the size difference with the female skeleton here. The subpubic angle where the two pelvic bones meet is typically smaller in males under 90 degrees. And in females, it's typically older over 100 degrees. The greater sciatic notch is also more narrow and deeper in males, and wider and shallower in females. The greater sciatic notch is actually one of the most reliable indicators of biological sex. These are just some of the few of the many morphological differences between biologically male and female skeletons. It is our goal here at the Bone Museum to make the study of osteology more accessible to everyone, and we hope that you learned something new from this video today. And if you still hadn't figured it out yet, this is a skeleton that is presumed to be biologically female. Female and this one biologically male. Did you get it right?